morning, everybody. Um, this is a total surprise vlog, and <laughs> I'm excited. I missed holding the camera, so I am, yeah, I'm excited. Um, my face is a little shiny. I just finished washing it, used Origins Ginseng on my Clarisonic Mia, and then used some of the Aesop Toner, which is one of my favorites currently. I'm gonna vlog today because I just felt like it, and I have the day off, and I'm feeling really rested, and that's it. No further explanation. So I'm going to get some coffee in me, and then I'm going to get this day rocking and rolling. If you are following me on Instagram, you know that I am obsessed with The Greatest Showman. But yesterday I went and saw the movie and I was nervous because of the mixed reviews it's been getting. I thought the costume, the choreography, the score, the cinematography, the storyline, I loved it so much that I have a ticket to go back this morning to see it again because I thought it was fantastic. If you like a movie musical, Go. It's so good. For my outfit today, I'm just wearing this owl sweatshirt that I picked up in Belgium, some skinny jeans, and those John Barbados boots that have been getting me through the entire winter. We're going to go ahead and run some errands and get some juice. I have about an hour before the movie, so let's get moving. ready for Steven. We're just having spaghetti and I made some turkey meatballs. Um, but I thought we'd eat dinner in the dining room tonight. I have the table all set for him, except for the spaghetti. But I already poured some wine for him. I have that for me. And yeah, we're gonna eat dinner in the dining room. And I have the soundtrack to The Greatest Showman playing. And honestly, if I could get Steven to go tonight, I would go and see it for the third time. My health, my skin is very shiny and healthy. Um, all right, so I am going to wrap up dinner and then I'm gonna make this vlog go today and tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. We're getting ready to take Bubba's for a walk and it is four degrees outside. I can hardly wait. That's Steven's stylish coat. Oh, look at that. <laughs> How could you not wanna? be married to that vision. This quote is from Lost World, since 1998. Of course you... What? Of course you've had it since 1998. Can he get undressed in the house? He can. My face is freezing. I am going to head up and take a bath. So I'm gonna go get warmed up. I'm actually going to use a different candle tonight and I'm going to use the frosted cranberry. And I'm gonna also light my diptyque vanilla candle. So the first thing I'm going to put in my bath is the Pottery Barn Holiday Spice bath salt. I really, really love it. Light my candles. For my bubble bath, I've been using Philosophy Fresh Cream. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. My final bath setup for the evening, the warm up after that walk. Currently reading The Life We Bury. Um, just started it. It's pretty good though. Using my Aveda Clove shampoo that now Steven loves. This Diptyque body wash that Steven got me. A Lush Golden Wonder. The Napa Soap Company bath salts. Love the little wooden scoop it comes with. Ready to warm up with a bath on this very wintry day. And we are just going to hang out on the couch. And I have a cuddle partner, Mr. Bubba's. 
and my hot water bottle. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday morning. It is around 9.30. Steven picked up coffee. He's getting ready to take Pubbis for a walk, and I am waiting for our cabinet guy to come to the house at 10 because this cabinet, if you listen, it has started sticking, so when you let it close, it's like stopping. So, he's coming to fix that today at 10 o'clock, and it should take him only a few minutes, and then we will get our day like really started. I'm listening to The Greatest Showman soundtrack, and I have convinced Steven to go this evening, and I got us really good seats. Steven and Bubba's are back from their walk. Hi, was it fun? Was it fun? Did you enjoy yourself? Did, oh, you want your chin scorched. The cabinet is now fixed. So now it doesn't stick anymore. It closes on its own. All is well. Um, if you see a Christmas tree growing out of the fridge in the garage, that's my experiment. I got Steven a grow your own Christmas tree for Christmas. Because he loves to like plant and do all that kind of stuff. So it was like in this beautiful tin and you let it grow in that pot for one year and then you transfer it outside um, the second year. So we're gonna see if he can grow his own Christmas tree. Bye. I'm going bye bye. I'm going bye bye. I'm going bye bye. Hi, I'm going bye bye. I'm going bye bye. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going bye bye. Love you. We had some bread, so I fed the deer and the birds. Because you're a wonderful person. Hi. Hi. How is you? How are you? Daddy picked up some things. Daddy picked up some things. Despite many <laughs> asks, I have not filmed a what I got for Christmas video, and it's probably now like a little too late to do one. Um, plus, I just didn't really feel like it. Um, but I thought I would go through and share some of the books that I got for Christmas. And then as things pop up on my channel, I'll let you know that I got it for Christmas. And that's how you'll kind of learn. But to sit down and film what I got seems just a little, I don't know, just don't feel like doing it. But I thought I'd show you some books that I'm really excited about. Um, so let's go ahead and go through some of the books that I got. This one is... A diary of an Oxygen Thief. And I'll just quickly read the back of it. Hurt people hurt people. Say Holden Caulfield was an alcoholic and Lolita was a photographer's assistant and somehow they met in Bright Lights Big City. He's blinded by love, she by ambition. Diary of an Oxygen Thief is an honest, hilarious, and heart-rendering novel, but above all, a very realistic account of what we do to each other and what we allow to have done to us. I'm going to say this wrong, but I also got the little book of Hugo, and it's the Danish Secrets of Happy Living. Steven also picked out this book for me. He said it kept coming up in his recommendations, but sounded like something I would love. It's called Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. Years later, her father has disappeared, and the country is at war. Anna works at a Brooklyn naval yard. One evening at a nightclub, she meets Dexter Stiles again and begins to understand the complexity of her father's life, the reasons he might have vanished. Jennifer Egan's first historical novel follows Anna and Stiles into a world of populated by gangsters, sailors, divers, bankers, and union men. Uh, another book I got is Making Winter a Cuga inspired guide to surviving the winter months. I'm really excited about this one. Has some recipes, has some DIYs. Definitely going to enjoy diving into that. Then I also got Kate Spade, Things We Love. This is just a beautiful, like colorful book um, with some really great photography in it. Lastly, I also got Kate Spade's Places to Go, People to See. Really excited about having these for my coffee table. Just look at some of those photos. I will definitely be using some of them as my iPhone wallpapers. So those are some of the books that I will be looking at over the coming months. So what's happening now, Steven is wrapping up dinner and I'm gonna get cleaned up. And then around 9.30, we are going to head to the movie theater to see The Great Showman. Me for the third time, Steven for the first time, but it's a great excuse for me to go. Well, my friends, 2017 is coming to a close, and I know it has all of us thinking about what we want to do and accomplish next year. 
and I think this time of year is one of those times where we can start comparing ourselves to other people because this time of year you spend it with a lot of people and family members and kind of seeing what other people have. It also doesn't help that we have the Hallmark Channel and see the woman with the bookstore that's going to close down and then a prince comes and buys a book and they fall in love. That's not how life works, but I think we start comparing ourselves to what it's supposed to look like. And I really think for 2018, I'm going into it with like not a ton of resolutions. Um, I'm really going to look at my life in like four buckets. Did I give as much as I wanted to, to people? Did I spread my impact as far as it could go? Did I take care of myself in the meantime so that I could be better for others? And four, did I give myself professionally to my career? Um, while still balancing my life, but not sacrificing any of the quality of my work. And I'm going to go through those four buckets, and I'm going to say things that I did well and things that I didn't do well. And I'm going to stay on my side of the fence and not compare myself to anybody else. And you know what? Next year, I'm just going to try to do a little bit better. That's it. There's no big goal. There's no big end number or big grandiose event that needs to take place to make me feel like I accomplished it. All I'm going to try to do is find the areas that I did a little lousy in and try to do better. That's it. And little by little by little, we become just a better person. So that's what my focus is. My resolution is to just do a little bit better. And I hope that's yours too. That's it. Now you have a job. In the comment section, I want you to write the one to two things that you want to get a little bit better at in 2018. And take the time to read other people's comments. You just might find people who are working on the same exact thing as you. And then why not connect and become accountability partners? The best way to achieve something is to have a partner to do it with. If you are looking for support, uh, about eight months ago I started the Kindness Community over on Facebook. It's about a thousand members strong. It's a really great place to connect with people and offer support to one another. I will leave all that information linked in the description box below, but getting on Facebook, you can just search the group Kindness Community and it should pop right up for you. Are you so excited to go see The Greatest Showman? What else am I doing on a Friday night at 10 p.m.? You're not excited? We'll see what happens. Okay. We are back from the movie and it's around midnight. Steven, what'd you think? Uh, it was good. Um, I would see it three times, but it was pretty good movie. It was very good. What did you think? Would you just wake He's up? Sleeping. Did you That's just wake cool. up? So tomorrow, we'll look at that hair. That's a sight. Um, tomorrow will be day three of this vlog, and I'm just going to keep it going. And tomorrow I'm going to share a lot of new things I picked up now that the house isn't decorated for Christmas, as well as share a couple ideas with you. So I will see you all in the morning. It is Saturday morning. Steven and Bubba's are out for a walk. I just finished meal planning for the week. Tonight is curried vegetables. Sunday I'm making a chicken tortilla soup. Monday is turkey bolognese. Tuesday is leftovers. Wednesday, Thursday, I'm traveling for work, so Steven is on his own, and then Friday we'll have homemade pizza. I needed a few more groceries, so I went ahead and placed an Instacart order. You guys all know I've been talking about Instacart a lot, and I love it. It is, like, life-changing. So... And then for those who don't know, my meal plan board goes right here in my pantry. I love my pantry. My llama paper. It's just too cute. So yes, that's the meal plan for the week. All the groceries that needed to be picked up are picked up and I'm all set. I have the soundtrack of The Greatest Showman playing, of course. It's all I've been listening to. I promised you guys last night I would take you on a quick little tour of some things that I picked up after the house was undecorated to like still make it feel really warm and cozy. And I just wanna share a couple items that I got throughout the week that I am loving. So here are my tips for using decor in your kitchen. My decor in my kitchen is actually really functional and I just make sure that the pieces are really beautiful. So on my island, I keep a tray of things that I will grab often. So I have a set of smaller plates. I grab these for sandwiches if company comes over. 
I have all my cheese cutlery, so I could basically clear this tray off, throw on a slate board of cheese, the plates are there, the cheese cutlery is there, and throw a bottle of wine on there, and it looks like I had planned for them to come. I also keep this measuring cup. It is from the Hearth and Hand Joanna Gaines collection. I love it because it looks like a science beaker, but I fill this with water, and then when I have fresh herbs, I just rest them in there. So I have some parsley coming in my Instacart order, and the parsley will go right in there. Then I have my marble rolling pin. This is something I reach for, and it's nice to have it right out. Plus, it looks really beautiful. The rest of my kitchen decor is just layered cutting boards that I use for either presenting food or to throw my breakfast on and carry it to the table. I use these for so many things other than cutting. I use decorative marble trays to house like my measuring cups and my olive oil. It makes it look like it's part of the decor, not just things that I reach for often. And that's really, oh, so many of you have asked about this gold tin. It's from Goodwill. I think I paid $1.99 for it. And then lastly, I have my trivets and a couple more of my cutting boards over here. Some other new things that I picked up is I decided I didn't want a tray on every table in the house, but I really wanted everything to still feel very light and airy. So there are some tips. Light and airy doesn't mean that everything needs to be white. It just means that it should show some space. It should show some light. So I found this wire cage. You could still see through it. It feels really light on the table, even though it's a really big piece. Pick that up at Home Goods. Then in here, I found this candle at West Elm. I'm obsessed with it. It is like this black bottom and then it gradiates into a white. It's called their home scent. So it's bergamot, lavender, and oh, what else? It might be cedar. Anyway, it is exactly what you would want your home to smell like, and it, it will work for multiple seasons. I'm in love with it. I also kept the tray really light in its color, and instead of like big solid pieces, I used this glass dome to display the rock because it adds a little bit of reflection from the candle. I kept the mantle extremely simple. This is just a collection of candlesticks from Goodwill. I don't think a single one cost over a dollar and just cluster them in odd groups. So I have three on this side, five on this side. Feels really light and looks beautiful at night when they're all lit. To make the living room breathe a little bit, we actually moved our fiddle leaf fig in here because the plant that we had that I'll show you was getting too big and I didn't like it in this space anymore. This is the space we're in the most and I wanted it to fill less cluttery and just lighter in general. So the plant that we moved out is this enormous beast in the corner. And it was just overpowering the living room, but here in the dining room, it works really, really well. Now, here is my entryway table that a lot of you love. I posted a picture of this on Instagram. If you're not following me over there, you should be. And this pillar that all of you have asked about that came from an 1800s farmhouse. I think I paid $50 for it at an antique store and it's just like the most perfect color for our home. Once again, kept it really light. And then my suggestion is, Anytime you have an entryway table, you should always try to tuck some sort of seating. It's very welcoming to guests for them to have a place to sit to take off their shoes or sit to put them on. It's kind of unpredictable for it to be pushed under a table, but it looks so cool and adds just a really neat dimension to the table when it's not even in use. And these ceramic stools you can buy at Home Goods for like $30. But even if your table doesn't have a base like ours, you can just tuck it underneath. Two would look really cool underneath it. But I just love like the height that it gives under the table. Lastly, in our dining room, as you can see, it's very clean. I get a lot of airiness from the clear Lucite chairs just because you could see through them and they don't block your line of vision. But one thing that I am obsessed with lately are these hurricanes from West Elm. These are the large constellation hurricanes. They are amazing and they actually have constellation maps on here. Stephen has found a few as he's looked and I will recommend the flameless candles from West Elm are so good. They are LED. They are really reflective. They're really like sporadic and they look really natural and real. I highly recommend them. I know that you can get cheaper ones on Amazon or other places, but these look so good lit. I just really, really recommend them. Then that little terrarium 
plant thing is from Ikea. It was really cheap. I think it was like $15, $20. Those candlesticks are from Ikea. I just love how modern and clean they look. And yeah, that's the downstairs. It is really decluttered. Really, really like clean and just fills really nice. That's really what the house looks like now that Christmas is over. You can see it's really simple, but it still feels really warm and cozy to me and also very styled without it feeling cluttered. And I'm really tickled with how it turned out. All right, friends, I want to get this vlog to you for a Saturday treat. So I'm going to sign off like I do all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others and be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time. I know that you're curious, I know that you're strong But life can be furious and things can go wrong You go 